my name is Seb and welcome to The Prototype, a channel where I explore how to take ideas through to working prototypes. In this episode of Surf Track, I fully test my new hardware, fix my leaking case and take the device for a surf. Let's get started. Thank you so much for watching, it means a lot to me. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. So I'm working on SurfTrack, a small device to track the movement of a surfboard, snowboard or kiteboard and to give a score on how awesome a ride was. In the last episode, which I'm linking to here, I worked on the assumption I could build an electronic device capable of tracking the movement. And in this episode, I'll validate whether it works or not. But first, let's fix that leaking case. So if you remember, the first case I made uh, leaked and the hypothesis I was testing was I could make a waterproof one. So I obviously failed at that. Now to fix this, I did a bit of research into waterproof O-ring seal design and found this great little summary for working out the cavity shape. I'll link it below. As you can see, I mistakenly designed the case as two equal concave recesses matching the diameter of the O-ring. This was never going to work as there was nothing to compress the O-ring to create the seal. Using the summary, I modified the O-ring cavity so only one part would have a recess and it would be rectangular in shape, set against the flat surface of the lid. Putting the two together would compress the O-ring and create a seal. To test this, I added a bit of salt to the cavity once again and submerged the case in water. After many hours, I took it out and undid it. Success! No water! Okay, now that I have a waterproof case, time to dive into the electronics. To make life easier, I soldered connectors to the board giving me a semi-permanent way of talking to the processor. Off camera, I also made a small prototyping jig using pogo pins, which will allow me to go through multiple devices faster. Pogo pins are small spring mounted pins which I can hold my board against and they provide electrical contact, which is very useful when trying to program multiple devices quickly. I've designed this in a series of blocks and I'm going to be testing each of these blocks in turn. The process for testing Bluetooth, memory and accelerometer is to write firmware to test each of these components one by one. Firmware is software which is installed into an embedded processor. And if I do this in a smart way, I can reuse the testing code as the foundation for my eventual program. First, I want to make sure I can actually talk to the processor. And to do that, I wire up an ST-Link programmer and see if I can get a response from my programming environment. I wrote a quick blinky program to flash the onboard LED and program the device. Awesome. One of the great things about the NRF series is that all the GPIO pins are fully customizable. So there's complete freedom with how you wire up various sensors. This has a great advantage when laying out because you can trace lines from the processor direct to each sensor. However, if you're using the Arduino framework, which I am, it does mean that many of the standard libraries have to be reconfigured to use the non-standard pins. Or you can write your own board profile, which is what I've done. Next up, I want to make sure my Bluetooth antenna works, as this is one of the hardest things to get right. It'll also start letting me build out my user interface as I test other parts. I use existing libraries for the NRA52, and using a test app on my phone, I can confirm that I can connect via Bluetooth. I should be able to make the LED flash using my phone. Brilliant, so the antenna design works. Okay, next, let's see if I can save data the flash memory. The memory is interfaced via SPI, and I've used a pretty standard chip, so there should be some good open source libraries to use. This is one where I have to modify the library a little to work with the custom pins I'm using. The code I'm using will write and read from a memory address, and if those two numbers are the same, it will flash the LED. Okay, so I'm able to save data and retrieve data after power is removed. Next, I want to test the accelerometer. The accelerometer uses an I2C bus and has an address of hex 68 to communicate to it. I wrote a quick program to send the who am I command to that address every two seconds. This works by writing hex 75 to the address of the accelerometer, hex 68, and then asking for a response. If it works, the accelerometer should reply with hex 68 and my code will flash the LED. Hmm, this doesn't seem to have worked. Now I know a common mistake is to forget the data and clock pull-up resistors, but I have those. So to troubleshoot, I need to isolate where the fault is. Let's check that I've actually got I2C coming out of the processor. I use the SDA and SEL pull-up resistors, attach some wires, connecting them to my oscilloscope. Now the way I2C works is you have a clock signal, shown here in pink, and a data signal, shown here in yellow, and the information between gives us the binary information we want. My scope has a great feature which you can decode these messages so you can see exactly what's going on. But if you don't have this, you can just go through and work out the binary. Hex 68, for example, is 1101000. So we can see that data is being sent from the processor, but nothing is being received from the accelerometer. It means there's either something wrong with how I've wired up my accelerometer, 
or something else with how I've programmed the processor. Look at the schematic again, I checked that the lines are all connected correctly and I noticed the address line, there it is. I've wired this to use the alternative address of hex 69 by tying pin 980 high. Changing this address to 69 in code, recompiling and voila! We can see the correct response of 68 coming back from the accelerometer and the light is blinking. Finally, I want to make sure the battery charger is working. To do this, I verify I have a voltage of the battery charging chip and I connect a small LiPo battery. Powering it up, we can see the current consumption increases to the expected 200 milliamps, indicating that the charger is drawing charge. I can measure a voltage over the battery and it seems to have worked. Disconnecting the power, now we're on battery power and the processor is still working. So that's a pretty good indication that my charging circuit is working. Okay, so everything works. Now it's time to put some work onto the software design. The way I want to design this is to have a few states which the user can shift between. The main one, record, means it will sample the accelerometer 10 times a second and save this data to memory. Then we'll have a user state where we can communicate via Bluetooth to do basic functions like test, raise memory, download content and turn it on and off the recording. I then want to be able to tell the user what's going on through the LED and finally have a way of handling power shutting everything down and gracing, gracefully booting everything up. Now the great thing about having an accelerometer on the board is I can use the movement information to do useful things. For example, when a user picks up the device, indicating they want to use it, I can use that information to trigger a signal to turn everything on. After many hours and some good music, I end up with a short program that can record the raw accelerometer data, interface with the user via Bluetooth, and handles the power. Let's take a look. So, with my code, I can interface via Bluetooth and send and receive commands from my mobile phone. Sending S for status, I can flash the LED and also get some basic information from the chip. B shows me if the battery is charged. L gives me a live view of what's happening. Now, if I flick over to the plotter, we can see the attitude change in real time. This is really, really cool. I can move it on the X axis, the Y axis, and rotate around the z-axis. Pressing again, I turn off the live view, E erases memory, and importantly, R toggles the recording. So if I hit R, record for a few seconds, I can turn it off and press M to get a memory dump of all the contents. I can hit E again to erase and get ready for the next run. Before I test in a real world environment, I want to ensure the battery is going to last. This should draw around 10 to 20 milliamp hours, which with a 210 milliamp hour battery gives me 10 to 20 hours in an ideal case. But to be sure, I connect my multimeter to measure the current drawn and set it to average mode during a recording. With these numbers, I should get around 14, 15 hours of recording time, more than I have space for in my memory. Okay, I think I'm ready to test in the real world. Now, I'm not a surfer, but I do kiteboard, and I reckon the data I can capture kiteboarding is gonna be good enough to see if this works for surfing and other board sports. So I head down to the beach to record some data. I have the, uh, the tracker, my kiteboard, kite's all set up and I'm ready to go. So basically what I wanna do is just stick it on the back here and uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm using some pretty awesome double-sided tape. Get rid of the sand. That should be good to go. Unfortunately, while my device stuck to the board, my GoPro didn't, and I lost it and the footage to King Neptune. I hope the sacrifice the sea god plays well with the rest of this project. Okay, let's see what we've got. So the good news is I can download the data, but all I have now are raw numbers. Time to make sense of it all and to test my next hypothesis that we can visualize the data and create something useful. But I'm gonna leave all of that to the next episode. So you can see why I like to design my small prototypes using building blocks. It gives me a good framework for selecting components, laying out my PCBs, testing my hardware, and writing my firmware. And apart from that little hiccup from the accelerometer, I'm pretty excited that this works. In the next episode, I'll work on visualizing the data and we'll do a few more real-world tests. I can't wait. Thanks for watching.